There was a big policeman on duty down in Galway, and he's on on speed checks, and he's out there with the you know the the hand control speed to him. You know the way they stand in the bushes where you can't see them, and he's there with the hair dryer pointing down the road. And he, a big straight stretch of road, he sees all these lights flashing and cars overtaken on the inside and the outside. And so he, he sticks the speed gun on, and there's a car coming up the road that's doing 17 miles an hour. So he, he couldn't believe this, so he flags the car and pulls it in, and he's about, he's about to stop them. There's three fellas in the back seat, and they're all white as ghosts, and they're all shaking, and not one of them can speak. So he goes over to the driver to give out to him, and the first thing the driver says, he says, Before you speak, he says, I wasn't speeding. And the guard says, Of course you weren't speeding, you were doing something far worse than speeding. He says, You, you, you were going far too slow. The driver says, it was not. He says, I was doing exactly the speed limit. I never go over it. I never go under it. I was doing exactly the speed limit. Your man says, you were not. He says, look, he says, you were, you were doing 17 miles an hour. 17 miles an hour. And your man says, isn't that the speed limit? But he says, who told you that? The speed limit is 60. He says, no. He says, there's a big sign down the end of the road, says the driver. It says, that the speed N17. The guard says, that's not the speed limit. He says, that's, that's the number of the road. And he looked at the three lads in the back seat, and the three of them were like white and shaking. He said, what's wrong with these three lads? The driver says to the guard, he says, guard, we're just after coming off the R174. <laughs> two little lads, Seamus and Patrick, two wee brothers. And, and, and they were wee mischief makers. They were always in bother for this, that and the other. And then it come time for Seamus to go to school. And the first day of school, the teacher's there. And she decides to do a bit of religion. So, so she says to Seamus, she says, now Seamus, she says, where is God? And Seamus wouldn't answer. He wouldn't speak. She says, Seamus, I'm asking you a question there now. Come on. I know you're not there for nothing. Where is God? And, and he wouldn't speak. Now, Seamus, you have to answer the question. I'm the teacher. And I have, I'm going to ask you one more time. If you don't answer this, I'm going to throw you out of school. Now, come on. She says, where is God? And Seamus wouldn't answer, so she put him out of the school and Seamus went home and, and Patrick met him and he looked at the watch at half ten in the morning. He says, what are you doing home from school, Seamus, at half ten in the morning? And Seamus says, listen, Patrick, he says, we, we're in bother, we're in serious bother. He says, so why? He says, God's missing and I think we took him. <laughs> Murphy, Murphy, we farm. And on that farm he had a cow. And the cow was given birth to a calf and that's a long laborious process and when she was about halfway through giving birth the calf had been half in and half out young Dan young nine year old came walking down the yard and Murphy saw him come and he thought oh now Dan's going to start asking about the birds and the bees but Dan came down and he stood there he never said a word he just stood there with his mouth open and his eyes open and just stood staring and never spoke finally Murphy looked over he said are you alright Dan and Dan he nods the head he says ah, I am I am can I ask you a question daddy the father says, why? What, 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 what do you want to know? He says, Daddy, uh, how fast was that calf going when it hit the cow? <laughs> this fella sitting in a, in a bar in New York. And he went over to this other fella and he says to me, he says, hey, he says, can I buy you a drink? And the other boy says, actually, you can, surely. So I bought him a drink and then he, he says to me, he says, where are you from? The other boy says, I, I'm from Ireland. Go away, he says, you're from Ireland, you don't, I'm from Ireland too, he says, you have another round, another drink for Ireland, so they don't know what they're drinking, and that, they says, I'm just curious, what part of Ireland are you from? And says, he says, I'm from, from Kerry. Get away with that, he says, I'm from Kerry too, we'll have another drink for Kerry, so they'll have another couple of drinks for Kerry, and they says, well, that's brilliant, he says, and, and, and uh, what part of Kerry are you from? He says, I'm from Cahar Sivine. No joking, he says, I'm from Cahars. I will, I will have another drink for Cahars, I've been. So they've got another couple of drinks. And so they're chatting. Well, what school did you go to? I said, I went to St. Mary's School. Another drink for St. Mary's. This is unbelievable. St. Mary's, he says. He says, well, what part of Cahars, I've been are you from? He says, I was from Chapel Street. Big jippers, he says, I'm from Chapel Street. Another drink for Chapel Street. Because the next, what number in Chapel Street? He says, number 30. Big jippers, he says, I'm from number 30 in Chapel Street as well. And just with that, the manager of the bar came in and he says to the barman, anything happening? Ah, no, the Marmon, he says, the O'Reilly twi twins are at it again. He says, <laughs> This guard is on duty, and he, he stops this fellow for speeding. And, 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 and he, he said to the fellow, He says, uh, Can I see your license? He man said, I haven't got a license. So, you mean you haven't got a license? He says, I lost it for drunk driving. He says, You lost it for drunk driving? He says, Yeah. And he says, uh, Can I see the registration for this car? Well, he says, No, he says, well, It's not my car. He says, who owns it? I don't know. He says, I stole it. He says, you stole the car. 
Yes, that's right. It's, it's come to think of it. I think they saw the registration in the glove box when I was putting the gun in there. <laughs> yes, you have a gun in, in, in the glove box? Yes, I have. That's, that's, that's where, I, where I put the gun after I shot the owner of the car and killed him. He says I put the body in the boot. The guard said, what? Did you, there's a body in the boot? He says, there is. The policeman, the guard didn't know what to do, so he chased him back to the squad car and he radioed in. And he radioed in. The superintendent arrived out. About five squad cars, lights flashing, surrounded your man. And, and the superintendent went over. Your man's still sitting in the car. He says, right, sir. He says, uh, he says uh, can I see your licence? And the driver says, yeah, certainly there you are. And he gave him out the licence. And it was all right. So he says to me, he says, uh, so whose car is this? He says, it's mine, chief superintendent. I suppose, so. Here's the, here's the registration papers. And he gave him the registration papers. He says, uh, right. He says, could you, could you open the, the glove box there? I said. So he opened up the, the glove box. and There's no gun in it. So I thought there was a gun. No, he says, well, there wouldn't be no gun there. He says, he says uh, would you mind opening the boot? He says, I was told that there's a body in it. So I went out and he opened the boot. There was no body. And the chief super looked at me and said, I don't understand this. He said, we were ready in and we were told he didn't have a licence. That you stole the car, you killed the owner, put the owner in the boot, and there was a gun in the glove compartment. So who told you that? He says, this guard over here. <laughs> I suppose he told you I was speeding as well.